welcome to episode two of this week's game club or dang it not episode two it's part two of episode three and uh earlier we were talking about for the game of the week we we're talking about enter the gungeon josh you couldn't be there for that Heck but yeah. you're, you're pitch hitting for jose who couldn't make it this week because of a snafu and uh we forgot to mention so i'll mention it now the coming games for game club uh next week we'll be talking about pony island and then after that what's the name of that game chris little rescue machines and then after that, we'll be covering um, Mount Your Friends. That'll be September 13th. <laughs> Look out for that. Mount Your Friends. I love that game. It's as fun as it sounds. <laughs> anyway, so the uh, topic of the week uh, this week is the game. Um, or not the game. It's the game uh, Chris's birthday. Uh, yeah, woo! No. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, w- the topic of the week this week is Gamescom. It's happening right now. For those who don't know, if... Um, If you know anything about E3, E3 is tens of thousands of people in LA, huge conference where a lot of news comes out. It's the major video games American conference. And I've been to E3 and it is, there's so many people. It's so sweaty. It's so smashed in. And apparently Gamescom, 10 times worse. Literally hundreds of thousands of people come to Gamescom in Germany. It's Europe's biggest games conference. A lot of other news comes out. Uh, This year, Sony and Microsoft haven't had big showings there, but certainly other companies have. And so we thought we would make the uh, topic of the week sort of um, what we were most interested in this Gamescom, and we'll sort of transition seamlessly into the news because most of the news is Gamescom related. But there's a couple other things, too, that we'll deal with, and then we'll go from there. So let's start with, um, I was almost going to say Jose, Chris. How about you give yes. us your the big thing you got out of Gamescom? The big thing for me, I'm a big Star Citizen fan. Oh, man, so, nobody knew that. Yeah, in case anybody hadn't heard any of the other things we've ever done. <laughs> ever, ever, check, yeah. Check, check, So Star Citizen was talking about how they weren't going to do any big reveals from the showroom floor. And people should have noticed that they were being oddly specific with that statement. Because <laughs> they did a huge reveal in the press booth. Right. They showed a, we were on 2.5s on the test universe right now. So everyone was hoping for a glimpse of 2.6. They basically skipped ahead straight to 3.0. Right. We got the seamless uh, straight from loading up, getting in a ship, flying to a planet, getting a mission, flying to a wreck, then flying to another planet, all without loading screens. And it looked beautiful. It, it did. looked amazing. Um, the different physics grids were all working together. Which is, so I, on Ladders te- were working properly? Yeah, on a technical Doors level, were opening. it was just amazing. Yeah. They're there was a gun. He shot it a number of times. Doing things people said couldn't be done. Yeah. And they did it all live. That was the crazy thing. I would, if I had a company, I would have done a recorded presentation, but I'm not quite as brave. Yeah, that's something that needs to be mentioned. Uh, and, Chris, you could, you'll probably correct me a little bit here, but uh, something I didn't realize cause, um, is that all the, uh, you know, the all of the universe is um, like loaded on the screen at once. I don't want to say all of the universe, but everything you can s- see – nothing is clipping in nothing's loading yeah there's none of that pop-up right and you're not there's no loading screens where you're transitioning from being inside a ship to being inside a base it's all there it's existing at once there's absolutely no loading screens except for maybe the very first one to get into the game and when you're standing on the planet the horizon you see is the actual edge of the planet right and it's not a drawn-in graphic and this is due to i mean i guess what i would want to call it is it's cloud cloud um uh, processing isn't it like it's it this is happening and as a cloud process and it's being like kind of delivered to your system i will be honest i am not real up on the technical side of things okay and so i don't even bother trying to follow it's all way over my head but it's not all happening on your pc i would right? imagine it couldn't be Mm-mm. right it's uh, some of it i, I mean again I mean, a fair amount of it has to be but right uh, but this it's one of the reasons that they basically said don't ever expect a port to consoles right so they really wanted to show what PCs can do when they don't have to worry about dumbing it down for consoles. When they don't mind exploding your power supply. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so anything else from the 3.0, though? Like, what, what's, Tell us some of the things that just made you very excited for being a Star Citizen player. So they also revealed the Dragonfly, which they just con- was uh, in concept only, I think, like a month ago. Okay. So it's really showed how quick their pipeline for ships is has come or how far it's come because they get what they went from concept to in-game flying around in just seemingly no time mm. so i mean to be fair the the dragonfly is just a space motorcycle so it's not like it had a big cabin that they had to fill out and everything 
but still it was pretty remarkable yeah All so right. a lot of the naysayers are saying that star system is never going to happen and star system is saying hey for the last four years we've been laying the groundwork yeah if you, you know be patient because now you're going to start seeing things fall into place and it really felt like that's where it was at yeah yeah awesome well moving on uh now i gotta sort of uh got a level with the audience here the thing i was re- i'm really looking forward to that was at gamescom is this the south park the fractured butthole but i purposely <laughs> am not <laughs> you like that name huh? um but i'm purposely not looking at any more stuff for that game i'm going on radio silence until it releases so the thing so one of the games that they did show that i did pay attention to that i wanted to see news about was dishonored 2 um dishonored 2 i loved the first dishonored game yeah, the first dishonor is amazing yeah it's a kind of semi-open world it's kind of more like a bunch of different hub worlds or not right. hub, um and um in a in a very um kind of a steampunk slash french renaissance slash futuristic but not uh environment <coughs> and uh in it you um I'm not going to spoil any story, but you get superpowers essentially uh, be given to you. And these powers uh, start very basic, but you can upgrade them in skill trees based on your play game, the way you want to play the game. So for me, I was very stealthy and I also liked uh, the the travel powers, like being able to, I think they called it blink, where you um, essentially pull a night crawler where you, you jump shoot, across the room. Right, jump across the room and and uh, it also allowed for like traveling like from like different uh, vantage points without being seen which i liked and that was the first game and the first game was a good game that had a lot of promise dishonored 2 looks like it's delivering on all that promise it's uh the combat looks really interesting it's far more dynamic i was watching a video of of the main character um who like basically she was uh blinking onto like the backs of robots stabbing them blinking away um uh onto like far ledges uh kind of resetting herself and blinking back and attacking again and then sliding under the legs and doing all kinds of awesome things and uh i'm super excited for dishonored too and i really like the story it's not the most complicated story but it is an intriguing one kind of mixes science and religion um the story and uh also the environments there's a lot of good environmental storytelling where you can kind of overhear and see things and and choose to sort of have an effect upon the environment um and uh i look forward to seeing where the because the the next game uh, i believe takes place a number of years afterward it seems like it has to be at least 10 years and i'd like to see what's happened to that uh that country you're in 10 what years later to corvo yeah what happened to corvo uh i'm a little confused i think you might be able to play as Corvo. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, because for a while I thought you could only play as the one girl, uh, Emily, Emily Caldwin, yeah. and it seemed like it seems like that uh, I might have seen some news where you could pick between the two. Did it, when's that one coming out? Did they say? It comes out soon. I don't know. In November eleventh. Oh, cool. So that's really. I mean, I remember if it was the end of this year or beginning of next year. Yeah, November, November and October always have so many releases. Yeah, and. Um, Anyway, uh, Josh wasn't supposed to be here, but did you happen to catch anything from Gamescom? Uh, Final Fantasy 15. Oh, yeah? I did okay. catch a little bit of. Uh, so Final Fantasy it started. Uh, this is a little bit tough. How do we do this uh, kindly? Final Fantasy came out, and uh, Square Enix confirmed that they needed an extra two months for uh, the making of the game and the development switching, or the development switch that happened. The rumor is it plays like hot trash. And that's kind of disappointing. The... Uh, let's see, who was it that was originally... I was listening to Colin and Greg of Kind of Funny talk about how their sources seem to suggest that it just doesn't run well. Doesn't It's just not incredibly fun to play, and that's maybe what they're addressing. Right, and so that started with Tetsuya Nomura, and then uh, there was a switch halfway through to Hajime... He was the director. Yeah. The directing duties were later transferred to Hajime Tabata, okay. uh, and there has been a uh, saying that it was like, hey, this is either going to make or break... The franchise right because the yeah. 13 was kind of a disaster it was, uh, not was, kind of <laughs> okay. it was it was an incredible i'm trying disaster. to be kind i'm trying to be kind of yeah, we, we've we all got our one. favorite final fantasy games i played a lot of them. uh minus 10 that doesn't seem to be very many other people's favorites uh but whatever so this it's one is the annoying voice actors yeah 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 <laughs> especially when you go back it seemed not so bad at the time but when you go back and you watch video or you actually try to play final fantasy 10 again the voice acting is screeching it's awful 
Yeah, well, pretty awful. Um, pretty awful? Yeah, awful, awesome. Okay. Yeah, it's a new word. So, uh, <laughs> so get on said, it, Merriam-Webster. Yeah, <laughs> they said that this was going to make or break. <laughs> Urban Dictionary. And now maybe. the director is actually saying, well, this isn't actually going to make or break the franchise. Uh, they will do a global release, they said. So... I don't know, man. An extra two months. Uh, it's been what eleven years or something like that. In yeah, the since they already. Were, it was originally uh, debuted as a spin-off to Final Fantasy Thirteen <laughs> called Versus Thirteen, uh, called Final Fantasy Thirteen Versus or Versus yeah. Thirteen, and they they announced that spin-off before even Final Fantasy Thirteen came out, which yeah, was a seems number like of a, years ago. It seems like a bad move to make. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm excited to see what that gameplay looks like. I've seen a little bit of the trailers uh, and kind of like the hunting trailers. And There's stuff. been some demos. I mean, it's uh, going around the countryside in a car, fighting big monsters. There was a couple of... Um, Sounds like my weekends. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I do. I just drive around, <laughs> kill monsters. And yep, catch Pokemon. Yep. <laughs> you know you know what it looks like? It looks like a, a less impressive version of either Witcher or Elder Scrolls. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, it definitely has some of its own personality, but uh, but it does. The Venn diagram of interest definitely crosses over with, like, Witcher 3, for yeah. example. And as it stands, I'd probably rather replay Witcher 3 when it becomes a Game of the Year edition than get into this again. Um, it comes or, out into the month, doesn't it? August 30th? Yes, it does. Yeah. The Witcher 3 Game of the Year edition. Yep. It's going to be so good. I'm so happy about that. Josh is going to play it. So, uh, Final Fantasy 15, look for it or don't. Probably won't change your life one way or the other. All right. Okay. Uh, so, that was some of our picks. A couple of things like quick mentions for Gamescom. I'm sort of looking forward to Ghost Recon Wildlands. I don't know much about it, but I'm intrigued by it. I've played Ghost Recon in the past. I like uh, first-person uh, and third-person shooters. Um, this seems... I, I'm. I'm kind of done for the time being with the urban setting, so I'm in looking forward to new settings in these kinds of games. This game and almost sounds like a cross between Far Cry and like Ghost Recon. Yeah, that you're you're speaking my language. That's exactly <laughs> what I want to hear. Also, a lot of um, they keep advertising a lot of customizability with the weapons themselves. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, so do I. So I, I'm this is just gonna get a quick mention. We're gonna move right on from it. Uh, another quick mention is Ukulele. Uh, for those who aren't familiar, there was a game during the N64 days called uh, Banjo Kazooie, <sighs> a beloved platformer, so good, 3D platformer, and all the major players from Banjo Kazooie have come together as an independent studio. They can't make a Banjo Kazooie two or whatever it would be, so they're making another game, uh, Ukulele. <laughs> Kanjo Bazooie, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, they their new company, Microsoft. <laughs> 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 Micro hard, <laughs> <laughs> and they they kickstarted it to get it off the ground, and now it's um they actually have gameplay. Um, I'm just mentioning it because there's a lot of history here. I was I myself was never a huge Banjo Kazooie fan. I watched the video of it um that was put out during Gamescom, and it definitely looks like a 3D platformer of the N64 and uh, and just after that era. And that's era, okay. Era. That's fine for me, but that's not what I'm looking forward to right now. Another thing mentioned, maybe worth a little bit more conversation, is the reveal of Metal Gear Survive. And when they first released this, fans all over the world held their breath and then collectively sighed in disappointment as they watched the video. It looks awful. awful. It looks like it's got none of the charm. I missed the video for this. It's oh, You should watch it after the podcast it's so bad it looks like a resident evil game not and not a good one it looks like a bad resident evil game it looks like resident evil like five you don't have you don't have faith in the metal gear people no well that was the thing is like you know when kojima left konami because of whatever drama they had behind the scenes i i questioned myself maybe metal gear isn't just kojima maybe i mean he's a director that means he's important but there's a lot of other people that work on these games yeah maybe a lot of them are still there right and you know maybe i'm putting too much stock in kojima i need to wait and see what they do next well now i'm seeing it and it's it's just it's bad it's really bad it's so it's got it's it's so the trailer is corny it's it's like one of those when you watch a a movie and it's trying to be an action movie, but it's just full of all the wrong tropes and not even in like a parody style, not even like with like a sort of a grin that it knows what it is. It's trying to take itself seriously and it's just doing everything really tropey and bad. 
That's what the trailer is like. That's unfortunate. Yeah, and I love Metal Gear. For such a good series. The guys in this room know how much I dote over the Metal Gear series, and I wanted nothing more than the next Metal Gear. And, they, and the thing that upset Literally upsets, held the gun to my head and made me play it. Right, exactly. You know, and, and then I hooked a balloon to his back and shot him up in the <laughs> sky. Uh, actually, you loved it. You didn't even want to play the game or know the story. You no. just wanted to go around kidnapping people. Yeah. It is Metal Gear Solid Five <laughs> is the best kidnapping simulator ever made. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun, dude. <laughs> uh, taking cars, putting them in a balloon, then shooting down the balloon yeah. and having the cars crash on people. The sad thing here is it looks like Konami is never going to know what to do with Metal Gear, and I'm pretty sure, although this isn't confirmed, that Kojima isn't going to want to make a Metal Gear like spiritual successor he wants to move on to different concepts so those of us who are just really big fans of that game why not just end it well that's what's happening i mean it's konami can't end it because it's their only major seller nowadays every all the all the other konami I mean, they have in their pocket a lot of nostalgia games like castlevania yeah. but uh as far as like million dollar or, or multi-million copy yeah. sellers yeah. uh as far as I can remember, they only have Metal Gear. I'd play a first person Castlevania. A first person? Yeah. Oh, that'd be, that'd that'd be, be pretty one. scary. Yeah, well, they, they have Silent Hill, but again, that was <sighs> remember that PT demo? That's Konami. They could have done something with that, but they took that off. So awful. So awful? Not so, terrifying. Not, yeah, not terrifying. bad, just terrifying. Yeah. All right, what else we got? All right, moving on. It was revealed over the weekend, so this is almost breaking news, that there is a reported leak of a ps4 slim box i saw that now this isn't the ps4 neo this isn't the the one that's supposed to be more powerful but there are people are speculating that this is um going to be the next basic ps4 going forward and the idea is not only do you present a more powerful ps4 in the form of a neo but you show that the current ps4 will move forward and evolve itself and that will give those of us who still own a playstation 4 standard edition hope because if there's a new version of our own console that means sony won't be abandoning it when it comes to development and um i think that's pretty good marketing i think it's a pretty good idea i don't think that the system itself really needed a redesign it's already really sleek and skinny and nice looking um but you know as materials become cheaper and you can sort of cut down on costs and maybe make something that uses less materials that's what companies do so they can make more profit and also lower the prices for us so that's exciting that there's probably, you know, it's not totally confirmed, but the the picks look legit. That there's probably a PS4 Slim on the way, just as evidence, you know, that they're not going to just abandon the P- the standard PS4. Uh, let's see, that's it for news. I think let's um go ahead and talk about what's coming. What's coming out in the right, next week? We had week. the Titanfall weekend. Oh, t- yeah. Why don't you tell us about Titanfall? Titanfall you're the one who played yeah, it. they're doing the they're they call it the pre-alpha alpha test or something that's so tech dumb. test something like that <laughs> uh, it was probably the most polished alpha i've ever <laughs> seen i mean i've seen betas that didn't play this well but it was I everything i loved about titanfall one for sure with a few extra goodies so if you like titanfall one <laughs> it looks like you'll enjoy titanfall two <laughs> bless you josh Sorry. i liked watching you play it especially when that guy tore open the front of your titan and shot shoved you the gun in. <laughs> yeah he did Jeez. he tore off the canopy and shoved his gun in and shot me in the face <laughs> with, with a, his own titan with yeah. a gigantic cannon gun <laughs> <laughs> it was such an overkill it was so great uh, just they that game has mastered the uh setting up controls i feel like yeah and that wh- what what you called it the batman slingshot whatever yeah the batman grappling hook type thing yeah the batman grappling hook that that really made the movement pretty sweet yeah you were all over that map yeah and they they really make you feel like a ninja yeah and but it doesn't for as frantic and as fast as it is it doesn't feel as adhd as call of duty hmm. amazingly and uh so i, don't know I know how that, they balanced that but they did so the reason i i played a little bit like i mean the, the smallest bit of the first titan fall because i'm more of a campaign guy and we all know it didn't have a campaign um but uh, I hear the news is that Titanfall 2 does have a campaign. Yeah, that's what they're saying. I guess they listen to the fans. Yeah. What Do you know anything about that? Or I have do any, not. Any impressions? I do not. I yeah. hear it's um a, a roughly eight to nine hour campaign, which means it's probably more like a six to seven hour campaign. Yeah. But uh, that might be good enough to make me buy it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to give that a real chat when it comes. Is there a release date for that? I haven't checked. October. On. Oh, boy. That's around the corner. Yeah. 
Then it's definitely not pre-alpha. Yeah, no, no, a pre-alpha. <laughs> like, come on, guys. Yeah. I think they just say that so if anything goes wrong, they could be like, well, it's just the pre-alpha. I th- that, and I think they say it so they can do an, an alpha weekend, and then they can do a beta weekend. Yeah, maybe. They're going to just keep rehashing weekends. It. Yeah. Okay, so upcoming release. Yeah, so let's wrap this up so I can go back and play Titanfall. <laughs> <laughs> So some upcoming releases uh, for this week. We have uh, King of Fighters 14, which nobody really cares about. That's coming out on uh, PS4. I don't think it's coming out on anything else. Maybe just PS4. Yeah, I think it's a PS4 exclusive. Uh, Deus Ex Man- Mankind Divided that comes out on the PS4 and on the Xbox One and on the PC, of course. And um, that, uh, that game just looks great. I can't wait to play it. Right now, its meta, its meta score or its Metacritic score is um, an 85, which I think is totally respectable. IGN, which is an outlet that I appreciate personally, gave it a, a 9.2, I think, um, and that's a that's a very high score. And they had very high praise for it. They said that it's better than its uh, predecessor in every way, except for possibly the scope of the story. And that that makes sense because uh, Deus Ex: uh, Human Revolution, the story was like global, large. It was really big and uh, had a lot of um, consequence to it. Whereas this one, I know that they're focusing in on just a, on like, I think it's Russia. Um, maybe, or maybe it's not Russia. Maybe it's um, a different sort of Eastern European country. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember now, but uh, it's certainly something like a Russia or a Ukraine or something like that. Um, as if those are all the same places, which they're not. And what else? Uh, Axiom Verge on September 1st comes out in Wii U. Also, for those of you who haven't played Inside yet, which we talked about uh, last week, that comes out on the PS4 this Tuesday on August 23rd. So those of you waiting, you know, enjoy that on the PS4. And I think that's all that's of oh, those of you like who who like Madden, which I don't think it's anybody in this room that I comes out August 23rd. You love Madden? I do. Madden NFL 17. Yeah. 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 Is that all you got to say about it? I mean, here's the well, it's no Tecmo Super Bowl, but <laughs> that's <laughs> Yeah, it's not worth getting into with the limited time we have left. Okay, that's fine. So those are some of the releases that are just around the corner. And before we're all done, I wanted to talk about uh, we are we are not sponsored by Humble Bundle, but I very much personally appreciate them both for the great deals they give gamers, but also the chance to give to charity. Yet, uh, yet we are not sponsored by Humble Bundle. Yeah, Humble Bundle. Yet. We are waiting for that phone call, <laughs> right? We just keep putting it out there for you. They have this week a pretty good Humble Indie Bundle. It's Humble Indie Bundle 17. I'm not going to name all the games, but it can, includes the Beginner's Guide, which was a cool follow-up to um, the what's that Parable uh, game? Um, anybody remember? Nope. The Stanley Parable. It's a follow-up to the Stanley Parable. Stanley Par. I've played them both. Stanley Parable, I think, is a lot better. But the Beginner's Guide game is pretty good. Has uh, Octodad in it, which is just all right. But I really love Super Time Force Ultra. That's in this um, in this uh, humble bundle, and you can get those plus a handful of other games for just ten bucks. So that's a pretty killer steal. And um, if you're listening this week, definitely jump over to Humble Bundle and pick that up. And uh, what's nice is you can uh, pay whatever you want. If you, um, I would say you probably want to pay as this week about a minimum of five dollars and 84 cents which is nothing for quite a few games so anyway that's our report on the releases the news our topic on gamescom um we'd like it for you to sub- oh oh i'm sorry josh we were totally gonna i mean it's it's not very interesting information i mean nobody <laughs> here really cares but we'll we'll give the filthy casual his shot filthy uh, casual corner makes its return since week one go for it so two games, if you are an avid phone gamer, to check out uh, this week. Uh, Sniper 3D, okay. Sniper Assassin Shoot to Kill. Fun game, a bit repetitive after a little bit of Better time. Better than Shoot to Hurt. And <laughs> shoot to Maim. Uh, <laughs> but it is fun in the sense that uh, it's got an energy bar on it, so after about six or seven rounds, you have to wait for your energy to recharge. Not worth paying for anything on that one. Uh, and then another <laughs> new fun one, uh, Tiny Archers is a good game oh, okay. you follow the story of three different people do you want tiny archers and uh, <laughs> you follow you get tiny three archers these three different people and i think uh the first person that you play as is kind of like the legolas character right and you have to shoot and kill goblins and stuff and you it's a tower defense kind oh, of game I like tower and defense. after three goblins get to your tower you get killed 
but they have ranged goblins and things like oh, that. Oh, you're defending a tower. Yeah, a single tower. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> That's uh, really a tower defense. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, legitimately. Uh, very literally, I should say. And so, uh, two fun games if you are uh, just looking for something to do very quickly, right? If you and don't you don't have, have better games to play. To invest, uh, say you're on the toilet or uh, perhaps an airplane to Hawaii. That's what we Gamers <laughs> are on the toilet a lot with awful, awful diarrhea. So, so this might be an option. Well, it's because you guys eat all that Doritos. Uh <laughs> So be sure to check out these games. They're free in the App Store on Android and Apple. Uh, it will certainly be a lot of fun. By the way, Doritos, if you want to give us, uh, you know, give us some money for that shout out, we'd be happy. <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't. I mean, I'm not going to eat your Doritos. <laughs> Filthy. Filthy, Filthy Dorito Doritos. corner. Um, so that's pretty much all I got this week. All right. Well, find us on YouTube as you have and uh, find our other videos. Please like and subscribe and share if you were if you liked listening to this video and also um if you want to send us any uh requests or uh, messages or observations or questions about games coming up in game club uh find us at fnwgameclub at gmail.com and you or can if you have a game you want us to yeah yeah requests yeah yeah i mean if somebody's a developer and they oh right developers i mean we're waiting to be hooked up that would be super cool they'd like us to show their game right? we're always looking for new ideas yeah for sure Anyway, um, also, Jose is thinking about getting some Let's Plays done for us, so be looking out for cool. those. And um, also, uh, you know, just for our Twitter handles and for finding us on Facebook, go ahead and look down below at the description, and you'll find all that information there. You have a great day. <laughs>